Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our continued playthrough of Dungeon Degenerates, The Hand of Doom, where we are playing the starting scenario, the new starting scenario from the expansion, The Deadly Smell of Disease. Now, every time I start one of these videos, I try to make this statement. I want to be clear, this is full of spoilers. If you are not interested in hearing the storyline on this, then please be aware that you will if you watch this, and it will spoil the uh, campaign for you. In addition, there are some marginal, mild adult themes don't let your little children watch this game in particular i mean it's not bad it's you know i mean heck we're you watch all these games we're killing a whole bunch of people but this has occasional mild sexual references and things like that but it's really not bad i just want to make sure that if you're sensitive to that that you're aware okay so moving on what has happened so far well our three characters Dr. Oz, the unlicensed surgeon alley cat sue the little lancanthropy infected cat person and our dishonored knight Carl have made their way out of the dungeons at the behest of the plague uh, the plague whatever the guys are, the guys that cure the plague oh, plague not plague bearers but um, um, oh, whatever they're called, why am I blanking out I always do that, blank out on their names every time I try to explain this to you but um, um, yeah those guys Anyway, the Plague Finders. Finders, finders. Okay, lock it in, Doug. Lock it in. All right. The Plague Finders um, released us from prison, because remember, we're degenerates from the dungeon, to uh, stop the plague. And if we do that, then we get pardoned, and we can continue on our merry way without the law breathing down our necks. So, probably not going to work out the way we want it to, but that's the... the that's what the, the promise is for our three intrepid degenerates. Now, uh, we have had some level of success. I would say some pretty big level of success. We have managed to uh, make our way down. We've, we've cleared a couple of objectives, trying to find the source of the plague and see if we can cure it. And on our way, we also had a massive battle with the dreaded plague knight. He is a villain. And in a combat that was not the hardest combat that we had in the game, the combat before that was much tougher where Carl actually went down in the fight and had to come back. Um, still, we took we suffered some wounds, we had some things go on, but we're okay. Still, the only person with a, a plague counter on them, and it's only one, is our unlicensed surgeon, Dr. Oz. And we can get rid of that in a, in a community for five gold. We've got plenty of gold to do things like that. So even that is not so bad. Now, I think what's more dangerous for us is these danger levels are getting high on the board but we're going to be moving on and we're going to be doing that this turn nobody has any um any to any recovery things that they have to do nothing is preventing us from moving we've already scouted this location we have a scout marker so we're going to be able to move right to here without any incident at all just get down to uh, the fishmonger's camp and get this final this well what we the final objective we'll need there's two on the board there's also one up here but we only need um the number of players plus one, so that will be four. We've already uh, gotten, we've already, sorry, gotten, great great English, Doug. We've already been able to recover clue five, four, and six, so we are good to go. So that's where the story's at so far. And uh, we do need, now, what do we need to do next, really? What we need to do is we need to get down here and recover this objective. Then we're probably, as you can see, I don't know if it's show, yeah, right here, you can see that this is a port town. We're probably going to need to make a bold move and get ourselves up here to Fastbridge, another port town also a law area, and try and get to, to the um, other villain, the Famine Knight, before the Famine Knight gets to his destined location. Luckily, he hasn't moved much. We've been kind of blessed that way. So he did make a pretty big move. He started down here and moved up the, up the road there, and that's where he's at now. So with that said, guys, let's continue on our adventures with a doc, the doctor, Dr. Oz. She is coming along quite nicely, but she is okay. We also have Ali Katsu. She, I still can't get figure out what, what voice I would want to do. Maybe a little, a little hissy kitty cat voice. I'm not sure. And then, of course, Carl calls our big, big dishonored knight. He wants to go kill everything. Uh, let's go and make sure that this happens. We're going to get this objective this turn. Boom. Okay, as usual, we're going to start our turn with the sequence, the map action sequence, and it says, just, just for a quick refresher, each party chooses a map action. Well, we only have one party, so we're okay there. We're traveling as a group, which has paid off for us, I believe. I think it would have gone worse for us if we did split this group up. It's three characters. It's harder to figure out how to split them up. Anyway, we're going to go into a bold stance as we travel, and uh, that will put us at a forced march, but there is an explore token. Now, I'm always a little confused on this. Since the Explorer token's here, does it count for each of these roadways? I have to think it does. Okay, so anyway, um, 
we're going to travel down here. What that means is since there is an explore token, we know this road is this area well. We don't have to make the con roll for a forced march, so we understand it. Um, and we're going to get down there. Now, unfortunately, the, all we're going to be able to do is move because we can't take a rest action. We only get to do one map action for the party for the turn. So we made it down to the fishmonger's camp here. It is a settlement, so there's lots of things we can do next turn when we rest, such as uh, get rid of a plague token. Because it doesn't say you have to be in Brutalburg. I think it just says you have to be in a settlement like Brutalburg to do that. I'm just going to double check that just so I can say it. Um, yeah. And so what we're well, the thing about collecting the tokens the, is the objective cleansing the war strike, which says when you successfully explore a clue token, flip the clue token face up and, re, and resolve the corresponding encounter. That's what we've been doing. Um, we have a, we, we've basically got nothing but bad things, and I don't think there's anything good in it. But anyway, we also have this uh, when you try, oh, it is at Brutalburg or, or the Holy Order, we can reduce our so we're not going to be able to reduce take out that plague token away from the doctor in the fishmonger's camp. Nah, that's too bad, but anyway, here we are. We have moved, and now we're going to draw our um, our card. Now, if for some reason I may I'm not right about the clue, the um, explore tokens, which I'm pretty sure I am. Uh, we would have to make a con roll, but I'm going to think, I think we're okay. But anyway, let's just get our deck out and see what kind of encounter we have here. The good news is the fishmonger's camp is only a two, so we're not too bad there. And, oh, well, <laughs> it's a one, and it's in the green area. Okay, well, here's the good news. This does not move the famine knight. We have to hit an uh, orange card to do that. And it says, um, Horrid swamp creatures raid and vandalize the sacred megaliths at the Stone Circle. Well, the Stone Circle is over here somewhere. Let's see, where's the Stone Circle? It's right there. So uh, the Stone Circle is currently a two. Uh, yuck. That means it's going to go to a one settlement. That means it was a safe place. It's now less safe. I'm going to try and see if I can find the right tokens for that. Because um, it has to be green. Looking for the green tokens. Come on, people. Anyway, I'll find those. I'll be right back. Okay, so the stone, the stone circle has been reduced to a 1. Now, here's a thing that's kind of sucks. We are going to have an encounter because it's a 1, and we're in a 2 space down here. So we're going to go back to that. Let's put this deck up for now. We're going to encounter the stone circle. Now, you do see that we are going to have an encounter. This will be our first encounter in the uh, wetlands right here. So I'm going to give this a quick shuffle because I don't think I have. Since we started, this will be our first encounter in this region. So we're going to have an encounter. Now, unless it says play immediately, we're just going to hold on to it. So I won't read it until after the fight, because we are going to fight. It says three characters are going to fight two wetland monsters. Now, as we travel around the board, things do get tougher. So maybe the reason we're not fighting three is they're typically worse. Okay, let's see what encounter we get. It says uh, uh, Scrog Spiker. Encounter Human Hunter. It does not say resolve immediately, so I'm going to put that aside for the moment. You can choose to read it or not while it's sitting there, but let me, let's wait until after the fight. So, as we enter the fish, the dangerous fishmonger's camp, which is not a safe place, though it is a settlement, we're going to have to deal with this. Okay, so three monsters. Huh? All right, well, here we go. The first one's a death troll. See, this is tougher. Mm -hmm. He's got. He's going to go after the person with the highest constitution. So that's going to be Carl. And he's got fear and Len endless. So we'll take care of fear in just a moment because that is one where he went, we activate when he shows up. He's got ten health. Wow. And then the second one is the bull scrog croaker, filth fishoid. It's got the power of summon. We got to kill him fast. It's got an attack of five. It's going to go after the one with the highest agility. That will be a toss-up between Alikatsu and the Doctor. I think we're going with Alikatsu so the Doctor can attack freely. Okay. And it ha also has ten C. As you can see, they are tougher. All right. That is currently our encounter at the Stone Circle. We are going into combat now. And as you know, with combat, we have a slightly different set of actions. Now, with that, means we're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish targets with the monsters. We have done that. The Death Troll has decided to target Carl, um, and the uh, Bull Scrog Croaker is targeting Alley Cat Sue. Now we, we, now we need to take care of their arrival abilities. The first arrival ability is from our Troll. It is Fear, and let's see what Fear does. Each adventure, adventure in a monster space must make a morale test. If you fail this test, you are stunned until the end of your following turn. Ouch! Let's go do that. We'll start with uh, the Doctor. And remember, these are morale tests. Morale of eight for the Doctor. This is, oh, that's a very big scary troll. I'm going to have to roll for it. It's awful. Oh, just made it with an eight. So no problem for the Doctor. 
Okay, Alley Cat Sue is also an eight. Come on, Alley Cat Sue. Four, five, six, seven. We are good there. So, and then the person with the highest morale is Carl. Carl. So Sue just growls at it. This is whatever. And then Carl says, "I'm not afraid of a troll. Almost afraid of a troll, but not quite." He made it as well with an eight. We have a nine. So we are good. No fear effect there. Now we just go into the battle itself. So we're going to start with the doctor, the good, the good doctor, because the doctor still has the highest perception or, um, to fight with, so um, or morale, whatever it is, she's the highest. So, is that right? Yeah, 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 we're good. Okay, so now we're going to start our fights. We are going to pick either a stance of, yeah, it's perception. We're going to pick either a stance of uh, assault or guard. Remember, they, they have different effects on us. So we're going to pick assault for the doctor. Why? Because we can't be attacked. And I believe that since the croaker has summon, they both have the same. The, the croaker has the summon ability, which means at the end of the end of its round, it's going to summon in another monster. Yeah, it says if this monster is still alive at the end of its first combat round, draw a monster. So we don't want to fight any more things. So let's see if we can take him out with two hits. We'll see. So what do we roll? Well, we're going to roll two attack dice. We don't need to roll any defense dice. We're in assault stance. So we're going to roll a power die. And we get to avoid an armor. It doesn't have any armor, but that's okay. We would get because it also has the filth of thing. So if we were in a assault stance and it had the keyword of filth, which it does, we would have been able to avoid armor. But it's not a big deal. Do we hit? Oh, just barely. Now the, his the doctor's item is an agility item. This is actually a very good roll for us because it can do a lot of damage. As an agility of eight, we rolled a seven. So so the doctor successfully hit. Power die sucked as usual, but our normal die was a six. So our highest die is six, doing, meaning that we do six points of damage to the creature. That leaves him with four. We're going to get four wounds. Now, now somebody said that, that uh, about you know it says to leave the amount of damage on the creature that's left over to, to kill it. Some people say differently. It doesn't really matter. Either way, we're counting down the hit points. So I'm playing it that way. He's got four hit points on him as Ali Katsu gets to start her assault on this thing. Now, if she can kill it, we're not going to have a summon. Because it's not its turn yet. It's going to happen now. So Alley Cat Sue is going to attack. Um, we have never used the Lycanthropy ability. I'm debating on waiting until I can actually turn it into um, the higher higher ranking one, which requires 13 experience. We're not there yet with Alley Cat. Well, we are there. No, we're one away. So if she can kill something in this fight, we'll have the experience in the settlement phase to be able to uh, bump that card up. Maybe some other people get some new skills. That'd be pretty cool, too. Anyway, we're going to attack with Claws. And again... We're gonna. We're going to. I think we're gonna stay in assault stance. It's only one monster, so we're going to assault this thing. So we do as much damage as possible. But we are going to have to roll defense in this case. We could take five points of damage. Alley Cat Sue has two points of damage on her right now, so we're okay there. So we're gonna roll two attack dice, two defense dice, and one power die, which has not been very powerful in my rolls. Let's see what we get. Well, that, that's not a terrible roll. It'll be just enough to kill it. So, look, here's what we have here. Four, five, six. That's a good roll for uh, defense. We have, we're going to block four damage from that. So we are going to take one more damage. So Ali Katsu now has four damage on her. And then our attack hit as well with a five. Remember, we have to roll under our agility, which is an eight for Ali Katsu. And our power dies higher at four points, which is just enough to kill the uh, bull, the bullscrog croaker, so we killed this filthy fishoid, and she won that battle. So we're good there. That was a good, good tactic to go after first. Well, we'll see because now we have call calls says I'm going to fight this thing. It's awful. It's a big beastie. I don't know what to. No, that's I'm sorry. Doing the doctor. <laughs> the doctor saying, "Oh, call kill it, please." Okay, so uh, we're gonna stay in assault stance. We're fighting this death troll. He's pretty nasty. No armor, but he does do five, and he's got endless. And I gotta remember what endless does. Let's take a look at that very quickly. Um, endless. This monster cannot be reduced below one hit point while a witch is in the same space. Well, good news, no witches. So what do we get with Carl? Well, we're going to go in assault stance as well because that gives, as we're in assault stance with our pole axe, as you may roll an additional power die when you attack this uh, this creature. So we're gonna do that. And we're going to be in assault. So we're going to go all out attack on this thing. We could take some damage. Carl actually kind of hurt still. We're going to heal him up a bit. But I think we'll be okay. Wow. That was a really bad roll. In one sense. 
in the fact that we're going to take five more damage because we absolutely failed this roll, the defense roll completely with double sixes. But we did hit and we got really good power dice. That was a one. But anyway, look at that. So we're going to get to pick our highest die. Obviously, that's a six. So we're going to do six points of damage. Again, leaving the troll with four health. But Carl took, he would take five points of damage. However, he does have his breastplate. Uh, which def deflects two, po two points of that damage, so he took three. So he was at six, so he's now at nine points of damage out of his 16. He's pretty hurt. I mean, we're going to have to take this thing down next turn for sure. That ends the um, the, in the round, you know, the combat round. We're going to go back around to the Doctor. So the Doctor has got a free attack on the trolls, so Doctor will take an assault stance. Maybe the Doctor can kill and get some more experience. I mean, we've... we've We've got to, she says, I might like to learn some more things and just know how to bleed people. That's not very effective for me. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to take this power die. We're doing an assault stance. We are using the surgery saw again as an agility attack, which means we need an eight or less to hit. Let's hope, well, we did definitely hit, and we did, guess what, just enough to kill the troll. So actually, these, these were tougher monsters, but we did really well against them. So we, it had four points left on it. There they see those, uh, actually like that. Had four points left, we did four points of damage with our power die. No armor, it is dead. The doctor got the experience and um, Carl suffered the damage. So I don't know how I like that, but that's the way it worked out. And we are done with that combat. Yay, our encounter is not complete, however, because now we go to this. Okay, encounter humor hunter wild. A silent hunter stalks through the wetlands, searching for scrogs with a wicked harpoon clutched in his fist. The party may fight, approach, or ignore him. We're going to approach him. We just had a fight. We're going to approach him. We don't need to fight this guy, right? No reason. Uh, the scrog spiker will pay one gold for each fishoid trophy you have. Fishoids you destroy this turn. Then you may pay him three gold to place an explored counter in your space. He'll pay us one gold for each fish. Does that mean that we have to give up the trophy? Because I want the experience. Well, I mean, we would have gotten experience already. Would No, we wouldn't have, right? No, we wouldn't have. So, I mean, because we... do I, That's a 2-2, two, two, man. I don't know. I don't think it says... It says for each trophy you have. It doesn't say that you have to give it up. What do you think? Well, it'd be better for me. It's only one, so either way, I'm going to take. I'm going to keep the card. I don't. That's not very good. But we will pay the three gold to put an explore token on the um, fishmonger's camp between us. Right? It says uh, you may pay him three gold to place an explore token. So we'll it, we'll pay him the three gold. I think that's that's a wise decision. So we're going to place that on the fishmonger's camp right there. But uh, let's do. So that's that's our our encounter. And then he goes away. He says, "I'll see you later. Have fun." That was. Brilliant. Um, let's do that again sometime and wanders back into the wilderness. Um, again, just looking at the card here, trying to work work through it. We're going to pay him the three gold, which means we've put the token there and we're going to discard that. Okay, now, who, where's the three gold coming from first? Let's do that. Let's do our, our experience and we'll deal with that because it'll all balance out in the end. So, um, he does, the death troll does not give the doctor any um, money does give him two experience. So the, the doctor is going to spend one gold going down to six. I think Ali Katsu will spend one gold going down to six. And Carl, who has eight, will spend one gold going down to seven to cover that the cost of that token. We are burning this now. So that is good. We'll put that away. And then the croaker is going to give Ali Katsu... Oh, wait, I forgot to roll. we got to roll a two or less to see if the doctor gets a new item. Does not okay, and then we got the uh, we got Ali Katsu a 2 2. So let's take a look at that. We're gonna get two more gold back that puts her up to eight, and two more experience puts her up to uh, 14 experience. We got enough to kick over the lycanthropy skill, um, and then that's gonna go away. But we also get to roll again, it's gonna be a two or less on a d6. Let's see if we get it. We do not, so no new items for the crew. But we are there, and we have successfully completed that turn. The Stone Circle card is kaput. We are done with that. All right, well, we're doing pretty good, guys. We're, we're actually, that's that's going well so, for us so far. Um, now, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's wrap back around. We're going to take the second turn. That fight didn't take us too long. And we're going to take our map action, which will be a bold stance rest action. And why are we going to do that way? Well, let me find the card so I can show you why that's important to us. 
Okay, so during our map action, we're going to take a rest. Okay, make camp or stay in a town. Well, we happen to be in a town. It always shows this little town symbol, but it, that's not really what it is. It's this one. See, settlement. This space can have a town level and therefore can become a town. It's not a town right now. It's just a settlement. Um, but, wait, if it's not green, can I? Oh, you know what? Yeah, if it's not green, I can't do anything with it. I'd have to pump it up, wouldn't I? Well, we can still take the rest action. We can use our experience points and we can explore the location because that's what we want to do. We just won't be able to do the invest or trade. Well, we can do the invest, which is 20 gold, but we're not going to do that here. The fishmonger's camp is not that important to us at this juncture. So what we're going to do first is we're going to rest and recover. So we are going to make a morale test. Oh, everybody is wounded, so we're definitely going to be making this test. So right now the morale for uh, the doctor is 8. Let's see, uh, we did not pass, which is okay. It just means we only get half our morale healed in wounds, and it only mattered if we rolled doubles for the plague token on the doctor. So that means the doctor is going to go from having five wounds. We're going to, well, we'll make that two. So um, uh, the doctor has gone down to, to three wounds. It's not terrible, only three wounds on her. Now, Alley Cat Sue only has four wounds. Let's see if we can heal them all up. A six, seven, eight, nine is not enough again. Wow, that's terrible. So we're going to just, we're going to, her morale is six. So we're going to, we could heal three. Actually, I, I misjudged the doctor. The doctor's morale is eight. So we would go from five down to, so let's see, it would be four. So we're going to go down to one. Uh, Ali Cat Sue's a six. We're going to go down to three. She goes down to one wound as well. And then Carl, Carl's got a morale of nine. He should be able to manage. He does. That's an eight, so he is going to recover, which is important, all nine. He's currently on nine, so he's at back to full health there. That is awesome. Okay, good job there. Now we're going to explore. I think before we explore, because we can do these in any order except for the recover. That's the first thing we have to do. I'm debating, do I want to um, do this? I think, why not? I mean, we have the experience to do it. We might as well bump that up to... Uh, this this uh, quick act uh, 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 dropping the card. Sorry, this quick action instead because it gives an extra bonus of agility, magic, and morale. I don't know if that helps us. Place a wound counter on this card, or remove room counter from this card. This is our lycanthropy skill. Um, remove all counters from this card at the end of the fight if you are defeated. If there are counters on this card, you take one wound at the end of your turn each round. That's if we activate this. So we haven't done that, but I will spend the experience because it does make it a better, it's her main skill, it does make it better. We have 14 experience, so she is down to one. Now I'm going to take a moment to think about this. I may want to, um, yeah, I may want to improve further. Let me think. Okay, I made some choices. We're going to get some new skills on, um, uh, on, actually only on the doctor right now because nobody else has the experience to be able to do this. Alley Cat Sue just unlocked her lycanthropy, but we're going to take Black Market. Um, it's going to require eight experience from the doctor, leaving the doctor with one experience, so we're okay there. And it, mean, it says that draw a card from the loot deck if it is an ally. Now, when we're in a settlement and we're in bold stance, draw a card from the loot deck if it's an ally, item, or service. You may purchase it at its normal cost, otherwise discard it. So um, that is helpful. And then I, I'm planning to get track for Alley Cat Sue, but I realize we... We spent our experience on our, our mastery, becoming a lycanthropy master. Okay, now, it, it is now, we did buy that skill. We are still in our rest, bold resting phase in a settlement, so I think I can do this. I'm going to draw a loot card, and if it's an ally, item, or service, we can purchase it, and we do have money. So let's see if we can do that. It is an item, so we are not going to be able to purchase that. That will be discarded. Okay, all right, um, so because it had to be a... Ally, I, oh, it says item, item, do do do. Okay, so we can buy this at our normal price. Um, it's going to cost one. I, why not? Five. Uh, what is the ration? We're going to go down to five for the doctor. What does it do for us, the trail ration? Um, discard this card any time during the map action phase to remove a fatigued and weakened condition. Good. That is helpful. Remember, we also have the geode. I have not been using it. Um, probably should. We are in a, we are not in, we're not camping. We're actually in a yeah, we're not. So make a magic test. If you pass, you may place a metaphysical counter on this card. So it's i got to remember to do that when we're camping outside. Right now we're in a settlement, so we're not doing that. Doctor's got a few items. Pretty nice. Now we're going to do something even more interesting. We're going to explore. Now when we explore, 
we are going to make a perception test. So it's going to be Alley Cat Sue again. Okay, so we need to make an exploration, explore, explorer roll, rather. Wait, it's what happened? Because it says I can put an explore token on that space by paying the fishmonger. I wonder if that means I automatically get to explore this space. I think it would, but I'm going to do the roll anyway. Uh, she needs an eight or less. Shouldn't be too hard. There, we got a seven anyway. So either way, we're going to, to get that. And we got clue one. What does clue one give us in the, the scenario? Let's see. Clue one, the health inspection. Professional plague finders have beaten you to the punch and are sweeping the area of unwashed sickness. Remove the clue after resolving this card. Oh, health inspection. If you destroy it, take the plague finder's mask from the mission deck. Do not loot. Do not make a loot roll. Okay, let's take a look at the play at the uh, health inspection card. There it is. Health inspection. This comes out of our mission deck. It says encounter law plague. Encounter human law swarm. Okay. Um, plague finders march through the streets, rounding up locals and visitors alike to be gassed and cleansed. The party may avoid or fight. Hmm. I, if we fight them, we, we're actually going to get an item. I know that because it said so in the scenario. Um, hmm. I don't. I don't know. Hmm. Well, we can fight them. I think we'll fight them. I think we're going to fight them. Okay. Um, the reason being is because I don't like what they're going to do. They're just going to basically gas all the people. And we don't like that. However, in either case, it looks like we remove counters, uh, play counters from the settlement. There aren't any. So we're okay there. And we're in a settlement, so we'll increase the settlement level or make it, improve it, rather. Okay, fight. If the health inspector is victorious or escapes... Oh, if the health inspector is victorious or escapes, remove D3 plague counters from your space, then increase the town level if you are in the settlement. So nothing happens if we kill them. They just don't do anything. They have the ability of gas, abuse, and poison. So they're pretty nasty. Oh, abuse, poisoned. Okay, so let's look at gas. That's an on-arrival uh, ability. Each adventure or monster in space must make a contest. If you fail, you become poisoned. Okay, and poisoned. And then we have abuse, poison which is from a different thing. I'm going to have to look it up. There's abuse poison. Um, abuse. When this monster attacks a target with the indicated status condition or card or class, it has a plus one attack. So if, we, if anybody with a poison token then has to deal with, with the fact they get hurt more from their attacks because the plague finders abuse uh, po people with poison. And then we, we have a poison status that... I don't know, maybe this isn't worth it. I mean, our, our main goal here as characters, we're not heroes, remember. Our main goal is to... I think we're going to try to avoid them first. We have to fight them anyway. We'll see how that plays out. Okay, let's try to avoid them first. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to make... Uh, let's see. Uh, avoid. Each adventure must make a perception test. Okay, so let's start with um, the doctor. The doctor has the lowest with a 7. A 4, 5, 6, 7. So that was a success. Alley Cat Sue. Uh, perception of 8. A success, and then uh, the, the Carl has a perception of six. He still succeeded, so all three succeeded. Uh, it says if more, of course, testing for stealth. Basically, it says if more adventurers fail than pass, you must fight unless there is a veteran plague finder in your party. There's not, but we we succeeded. If the party successfully avoids the health inspectors, remove D3 counters from your space and increase the town level there. So, okay, we didn't do that. But we do increase the town level, so that means it's going to actually become a less dangerous space as opposed to a town. Not quite a town yet. It's got to turn green first, and it's not. It's a one. Uh, but that's basically the end of that encounter. We didn't. We we could have gotten the um, the plague finder's mask. It's pretty cool, but um, I don't know. It just seemed like they would. Why they just had a big fight. They don't want to fight something else again, and we got to get up there and take out the famine night because that's it and then get back to Brutalburg and that's part of our mission so 
I think this was the right way to go for us. We've explored the space, and then next turn we're going to take a river raft up. But that was a long, another long episode, guys. Hope you're enjoying it, man. We're not. We're kind of just grud trudging along. You know, it's funny. You look at this map; it doesn't look like it's all that big, but so much can happen in a turn in space that it feels like you're really traveling. Like we just went from Brutalburg down to Fishmonger's Camp, and it took us forever to get there. Right, four several episodes getting down there. And now we're about to head up to um, Eastbridge via River and go after the Famonite. That'll be faster. So, see, we're going to take this, this river route up to Fast Bridge right there and get off. Then we can, we can encounter the uh, Plague Knight on the road, or Famonite on the road, rather, if he doesn't move. And I would like to get him killed. And then we can complete the first part of this scenario, uh, which is pretty good. Actually, I think that completes the entire scenario, if I'm not mistaken. And then we get some rewards, we get a mission path. So, um, yeah, the objectives here is to complete this mission. We have to do a rest in bold stance at a town in the lowlands. This is the lowlands, so we would have to do it there. We could be, might be able to do that at Witch Hill, right? Except it's all plague ridden. No, not Witch Hill. I thought there was, a, oh, a uh, hunting lodge. That might be closer for us than trying to get back to Brutalburg. I don't think it is, but we'll see. And then it says, um, during this mission, when the first party draws a blue danger card, okay, yeah, we did that. We're looking at objectives. Clues have been removed from the board equal to the number of adventures plus one. We've done that successfully right now. And then the Plague Knight or the Plague Knight or Famine Knight has been removed from the board. If there are more than two adventures, both monsters must, must be removed. So that's the step we're on now. We've got to go get the Famine Knight, and I think we can do it. We're pretty tough. We've got good skills. We're, we're good to go. All right. Well, you know what else? We could do one more thing. Let's take a look at Bleeding Mastery, because I would like to get rid of the Plague Token from the Doctor. It says, choose an adventure in your party, or yourself. Roll three dice. The chosen adventurer becomes fatigued and takes piercing damage equal to your lowest single die. Then remove the Plague Token. For each six rolled... Oh, uh, for each six rolled. Oh, that's rough. See, it's not very good. And We're going to take damage and be fatigued. We want to do that. I think we're going to pass. It's just one token. I'm not too worried about it yet. All right, guys, that's it for this this uh, uh, episode. So thanks so much. I'm looking forward to the next one. Take care. I will see you in the next episode where we uh, continue our adventure of uh, trying to trying to get rid of the deadly smell of disease in the lands. And then we could we're going to get a reward. And we're going to move on to something else. It's going to be pretty cool. We'll see what happens next. Anyway, uh, we got a couple turns I think before we uh, complete this uh, this mission. If we're successful, it looks like we're going to be. But uh, things can happen. So take care, guys. Talk to you soon.